Anime fans, One Piece fans, what is good? The answer to that question, of course, is One Piece. One Piece is what's good, and today is a kind of special video. One Piece Stampede Review. So, I went to watch this movie last night, and I liked it a lot. I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. There were some plot points, plot holes that I will go over in this review that makes me not say it's a 9 or a 10. But, yeah, nonetheless, let's get into it. So, the movie... I watched a non-spoiler review about One Piece Stampede by Grandline Review before I went to see the movie, and in that non-spoiler review, he said it was straight One Piece from start to finish, and I could not agree with that more. So it started with Blackbeard, a throwback to Blackbeard and Impel Down. Now Blackbeard, he had gotten all the prisoners out, said the whole thing about kill everyone in your cells. He saw Bullet and he said, okay, bring everybody, but leave him. So it was just kind of a nice thing, hyping up Bullet from the very beginning, somebody even Blackbeard didn't want on his crew. Now I know this is non-canon, but this is just in the context of the movie itself. So it was good, they started to bring massive hype for Bullet even from the beginning in a very clean manner, that is something I very much liked about the movie. So the main plot point about the movie was that there's a man named Buena Festa who was known as the uh, I think the Festival Master, I believe it was called, I can't quite remember. Okay, the Master of Festivities, Festival Master. So, yes, Festa, he made a lot of pirate expos in the past, it was indicated, before Rogers started the new era. And the point of the thing was, Festa found Rogers' treasure, which was an eternal log pose to Raftel. And he teamed up with Bullet and gave Bullet the log pose. And what he did was he made the pirate festival and leaked the information to the world government. So all the major pirates in the world were on the island and he got the bus, to, uh, he got the government to do a bus to call it on the island. The point of this being was so Douglas Bullet could defeat them all and be truly the strongest man in the world because Bullet, his goal was to surpass Roger and now that Roger is dead, he couldn't surpass Roger. So he wanted to do something in his mind that even Roger could not do. So it started, it was just kind of cool, we were seeing a lot of pirates, we could see that Oda had overseen the movie, so we're seeing things like, some pirates are getting more respect than others, like, Kid and Luffy are getting the most respect out of the supernovas, Kid was the first supernova to, like, jump on the challenge, because the challenge, a giant island, came up from a knock-up stream, and was floating in the air on a giant bubble, and on the geyser of the knock-up stream, so all the pirates were gonna go up the knock-up stream on the island, and get to the chest, which had Roger's treasure in it. So everybody started, they started going up, and then we were just able to see the interaction between the supernova. That was pretty cool. And as soon as they got on the island, everyone was fighting. We got a little bit of X Drake versus Kid, Yoroj versus Luffy. We just saw the supernova all fighting. So that was a pretty cool thing. And then Buggy was the head of security, so Law wasn't there. We saw Law had gotten to the island early. He had seen what Douglas Bullet was planning, gotten into a fight with Bullet, and was running away. Buggy was chasing him, but of course, Law got away from Buggy easily. And he appeared in the Straw Hat ship while they were on the knockup stream and alluded to Bullet about them, uh, to them about Bullet. He didn't actually say who was the problem. He told them they should leave, and Luffy's like, nope. And of course, that's something Luffy would do. So Sanji, Robin, Brooke, and Chopper all went with uh, Law to the underground of the Pirate Expo Island to go check out what's going on and that's where they completely found about the Buster Call and all that stuff. Now Luffy and Zoro and Usopp were on the Sky Island, the small Sky Island that had just appeared and Usopp was sniping from the ship, Zoro was holding guys off and Luffy was going up to the treasure, then Buggy betrayed uh, Vesta and took the treasure for himself, and then he saw what it was, and then a giant Galean just went up the knock-up stream and destroyed the island, and then everybody fell. And Usopp somehow got the chest in the air, and then he was on the debris of the island, floating in the water, when Bullet appeared out of nowhere, beat him up, and took the uh, treasure, and that's when Luffy got triggered. And then, that's when the pirates realized that a whole buster call was happening, 
and they all started running except for the 11 supernovas who were facing Bullet because they all wanted the treasure and in Luffy's case he wanted to avenge Usopp who was almost dead on the ground and they all fought Bullet. Luffy even went into Snake Man at one point and none of them could do anything to Bullet even together. Yes they weren't necessarily working cohesively together but even so if you got the 11 supernovas against you and it's not doing anything you know you're powerful. So that just kind of cemented the fact that Bullet is Yonko level. He wasn't using any Devil Fruit, and he was like completely destroying the Eleven Supernova. Even Gear Four Snake Man Luffy, they couldn't even do anything to him. All he did was smile a little bit. So then Bullet used his uh, Devil Fruit, the Gasha Gasha no Mi, which kind of allows the user to. It's almost like a glorified Pika, he can just take any inorganic materials and make it into a cohesive robot of sorts. So he made like, kind of a small robot out of his ship, so it wasn't even a small robot, it was a ginormous submarine that he turned into a robot that was an extension of himself and destroyed the supernova even more. And then the world government ships who were closing in, he just absorbed all of them and all the pirate ships into a giant body that was like as big as Pika, actually even bigger than Pika or like um, San Harlem Wolf. It was that big and kind of just started beating everybody's butt and then he destroyed Luffy and Luffy was kind of like almost dead and then just a whole bunch of fast paced things happened because the movie was super fast paced like Sabo came out of nowhere to fight Smoker and basically what happened in short was that the Buster Cole started happening and all the Marines and all the Pirates just ran away. Smoker did not run away. Smoker went to try and get the eternal log pose of Roger from Bullet so he could take it. And then, long story short, Crocodile, who just appeared out of nowhere as well, and Law and Luffy and Boa Hancock and Smoker and Sabo and Luffy all teamed up to defeat Bullet, who was in his giant over Pika body, like, way stronger than Pika, like, each punch he threw was equal to that of a King Kong gun, just like each basic punch he threw, and he was completely covered in hockey, so the plan was Law would use the Appa Appa no Mi to cut a small hole in Bullet's defenses, and all of them would go through and just exploit that small hole. And that was where the problems of the movie started coming in. This movie was great. Super action-packed, super thrilling. I would recommend you go see it. So th all the things I said were kind of the good things about the movie. I loved how when Sabo came, he fought Smoker for a little bit and he came out of nowhere. And it was a throwback to how Ace came out of nowhere and fought Smoker in Alabasta and Impo Down. I love the flashback from Impo Down. I love just the action in the movie in general. Very well animated, very well done. I loved how Usopp, I would, don't mind saying this, at the end, Usopp, who Bullet called weak and made fun of Luffy for protecting, Usopp's weapon was actually the final thing that destroyed Bullet, that was also kind of plot armor, but I'll get into that in a bit. So the movie was very good, but there were some plot armors. So Law should not have been able to cut Bullet, because Law's Devil Fruit has a drawback. He cannot cut things with stronger hockey than him. Yes. Hockey, the more you spread it, the weaker it becomes, I know, but the way they were talking about Bullet's hockey, even on his over, more big than Pika body, like, even hockey over all of that, they were acting like it was impenetrable. triple. So Law, he shouldn't have been able to cut Bullet because it was insinuated Law had weaker hockey than Bullet. Another problem with the movie was that once Law did that and they all blew through Bullet's ginormous body, which they shouldn't have been able to do as well, they like blew a whole giant hole into the side, he's Yonka level, like they shouldn't have been able to do that. Luffy beat Bullet in a 1v1 when Bullet was in his base form using Gear Force Bowman, but recalling Luffy could not even touch Bullet in Gear 4 Stake Man, which means that Bowman shouldn't have been able to do much better. Bullet should have destroyed Luffy in Gear 4 Bowman. There's no reason or way Luffy should have been able to defeat Bullet even in Gear 4 Bowman. So the whole way they defeated him was claw armor. Now Luffy used King Kong gun in the movie and beat Bullet's punch and wrecked through him. So that I kind of understand because King Kong gun is a Yonko level attack. So that part made sense, but 
Just a little bit of pet peeves about the movie, when Luffy was doing Gear 4, they didn't treat it like Gear 4. When he used King Kong gun, he threw it back and flung it forward like a regular Kong or like a regular elephant gun, but Luffy uses here forth by compacting it and shooting it out like a cannon, not swinging it back and rocketing it forward like the rest of his abilities. And he did King Kong Gatling, was Gat which was Gatling in Gear 4, but his Gatling in Gear 4 is supposed to be Kong Organ Gun, which follows the cannon-like trend, so they kind of got rid of that. Another thing I didn't like about the movie was that Law was a warlord, which is stupid, because in the movie, Zoro fought Fujitora and did way too well against Fujitora, uh, for that matter, that was also kind of annoying that F F Zoro was doing that well against Fujitora. But they knew who Fujitora was, and the Straw Hats only knew who Fujitora was in Dressrosa, which means Stampede would have had to take place post Dressrosa, which means Law was not a warlord anymore. So, those were just a lot of things that kind of took the movie down from a 9 or a 10 to an 8 because those things just should not have been but overall it was a very good movie I would definitely recommend you go see it so that's just kind of my review on the movie the movie was great it really was lots of good action a lot of good fights good animation good emotional plot points uh, of course the way they defeated bullet was stupid but that was just the movie the movie was good I would definitely recommend it so yeah, that's kind of my review, first movie review, I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, if you enjoy my content, and only if you enjoy my content, like this video, subscribe, and turn the notification for more One Piece comment, content, not comment, and yes, this movie was great, definitely recommend you go see it, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.